This program looks into extraordinary enzymes that when added to fuel appear to cut consumption and carbon dioxide emissions by making combustion engines more efficient. Enzymes are harmless protein catalysts that occur naturally in aqueous environments. But research into oil-based use of enzymes has been a lifetime's work pioneered by this man, Mr. Sasanuma. Can you please tell me when did your research start, sir? It's about 1965, and it's been a lifetime work since then. And what did this research focus on, please? It's to reduce pollution by using organics instead of chemicals. Bioproducts. Bioproducts, exactly. One question about the diesel bug, if I may. What do these enzymes do? Well, there are many functions, and depending on which bacteria the enzyme is working on, but one of the main functions is that it inhibits the growth of the bacteria and so it controls the quality of the oil. Mr. Sasanuma, Mikako, thank you very much for talking to me. Thank you. Thank you very much. These enzymes were developed to break down and dissolve sludge and water that collects in fuel storage tanks and pipelines and thus reduce corrosion. But 500,000 hours of sea trials in fuel tanks and engines of ships are producing the first long-term hard data results. I'm with Willem Veltevreder, the chief engineer from the Stenner Trader in the engine control room. Willem, welcome. Thank you. How long have the enzymes been used on the auxiliary engines of the Stenner Trader, please? It's now for about one year. One year. And have you had any problems? No, we have no problems. No problems. And what change have you measured in terms of measured results in fuel consumption, please? Fuel consumption is minus 8%. Minus 8%. And what change in carbon monoxide output? This is minus 22%. Minus 22? Yes. That's quite impressive. Yes, indeed. And what change in carbon dioxide, please? It's minus 8 Minus 8%. And what change in NOx gases, nitrogenous poisonous gas output? It's minus 9. Minus 9%. With such impressive results, do you think that these enzymes are likely to be used on the rest of the Stenner fleet? This will be a management decision, but they are good results, so hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. I well, we can't say fairer than that. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Willem. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Minus 8% on fuel consumption would save the oil reserves of Russia with approximately 6.3% of the world's oil reserves according to BP statistics. If every engine fuel in the world was treated with Mr. Sasanuma's enzymes. I'm with Malcolm Crawford, director of Salt Power in Japan and responsible for marketing Saltron. Welcome, Malcolm. Welcome to Belfast, Gareth. And if you could just tell me, please, what is the story? When did it begin here in Belfast in Northern Ireland? Well, it really began in the late 90s. And we brought the product Soltron from Japan. And we realized that it changed the combustion ignition qualities of fuel. And when you say it changed the combustion qualities, what exactly did it improve? Well, we found that it improved the power, but it also improved the economy. So we were seeing 6-7% efficiency, and uh, that was quite significant. That's the fuel improvement. Yes. Uh, and what about CO2? The same. Exactly the same? Yeah. And are there any byproducts then? Yes. Um, very interestingly, being a natural substance, the enzymes actually recover sludge, turning it into a certified uh, fuel in storage situations. What? Storage tanks and pipelines? Yeah. Also, we found in diesel, it inhibited the growth of bacteria, uh, known as the diesel bug. What's in this Saltron formula? Well, it's made up of a couple of dozen enzymes derived from green plant. It's nearly one part per four million in the fuel per enzyme. That's absolutely minuscule enzymes to fuel, one part per four million. Well, that is the amazing thing, and it means that it is viable 
for to treat fuels. And what sort of brands have we got then on the product? Well, we have uh, a number of brands, one being Axmile. They are in the marketplace for shipping, also for petrol stations and retail. But we also do industrial fuels and other fuels. And we've seen a lot of field trials, sea trials, with the Axmile brand, particularly in Holland. Yes, well, Professor Douglas of Queen's was involved in those trials. That's Professor Roy Douglas of Mechanical and Aeronautical Engineering at Queen's University, Belfast. And we caught up with him checking out the data measurement process on one of the Stenoline ships. I'm now with Professor Roy Douglas of Queen's University, Belfast on the bridge of the Stena Trader at Rotterdam. Roy, welcome. Thank you, Gareth. We've been talking about natural catalysts for fuel combustion, namely enzymes. Yes, very interesting topic this. We have been looking at how we would measure and assess these catalysts by measuring the fuel consumption in various engines. All the indications are that there's improved, more efficient combustion uh, using these, uh, these enzymes. So what exactly are the enzymes doing, do you think? We, we think they're acting as a natural catalyst, which is breaking down the fuel and making the combustion faster and more, more efficient. Uh, enzymes are, are, are natural catalytic elements that occur in all sorts of living organisms, including our own bodies. And we think they have the same sort of processes going on, but acting on the fuel rather than, say, breaking down food as they would do in our own bodies. And the end result is more efficient fuel combustion. Yes, it's clearly shown in the fuel consumption of several engines, engine applications that we've looked at. One of those engine applications is motoring, and we travel to Germany to look at garages that have used enzyme treatment at the petrol and diesel pumps. And you are? Bernsteig. Bernd, welcome. Can you please tell me the story of this service station? Yeah. It is easy. This service station exists since nearly 50 years and the sales in litres is always about uh, 120,000 litres a month average. For the total fuel sales of this For station? For the total fuel sales of the station. And what happened then? Then we put X mile in for trial. For how long? 12 months. And what was the end result of that? Uh, they had a sales increase in litres from about 120,000 litres up to nearly 300,000 litres a month. 120 to 300, that's nearly a threefold increase in the space of 12 months. That is correct. So what marketing went into this? Nearly nothing. What do you mean, nearly nothing? That we just have a small sign at the pumps. Well, there's no obvious sign on the station, so what else caused the increase? Nothing. We did not any marketing activities. So how did the people find out then? I think the only possibility is that one customer talked to the next customer or to friends or to other people. So word of mouth in this little town of Bürstadt caused that increase? Yeah. Is there any other cause that you can think of? No, because during the same time nearly all other fuel stations had a decrease in sales of leaders. While the, the sales of this service station increased? Correct. Well, that increase over the space of 12 months is very impressive, Bernd. Thank you. You're welcome. Then the oil distribution company stopped that service station treating their fuel with enzymes. We checked out another German service station. Your name is William... Seibusch. William Seibusch, yeah. and you manage a number of service stations, including this one? Including this one, yes. It is the station in the rhein neckar Zentrum in Mannheim. Mannheim. Yes. Okay. And you've shown us this computer printout of litre sales from the pumps of this service station... Yes. ...from the oil supply company? Yeah. Okay, so it's an official printout? It is official, yes. And the sales in the September were... Was 25,000 litres. 25,000 litres? 25,000. And that's when you started the trial of the x mines. Yeah. That's when it began in the September. This began in, 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 the, in the end of the September, yes. Right. Now, by the following July, your sales were... 425,000 litres okay. in, in July. Now, to be honest, that is a nearly 20-fold increase yeah. in the space of nine months. Yeah. Well, Definitely. Okay. I mean, uh, it's almost too good to be true, right? Yes. Okay, what happened then? And then the, the oil company said, stop. 
We don't like it. They stopped you adding X miles. Yes. Now they were acting as a cartel <laughs> to do that, I guess. Why? They said you destroyed our market. For the other service but stations. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Now surely they could have created the opportunity for the other service stations to sell X mile as well. Yes, but they don't like it, and they have the the our uh, the other one. You can read here the Shell or the Aral uh, Super uh, uh, gas oil with five cents or six cents per liter more, and we did it for one, and we have more and more customers, and they said, hey, we need six, and we have, I think, for myself. Our product is much better as the other. Protecting premium fuel from a biological yeah, alternative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, to be honest, that's probably illegal under European law. Yeah, yeah it is so. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not funny, really. I mean, I guess the environment suffers and we carry on using more fuel. Yeah, yeah it is so. Well, frankly, that's not the best of outcomes. Yeah. We would say that's a very bad outcome, really. Yeah. Bad for the environment, bad for the consumption of fuel for whole nations. Yes, yes. Well, I'm sorry to hear about that, but thank you very much, William Seibush. Thank you. During the time it took to research and film this program, we visited Queen's University Belfast a number of times to report on Professor Douglas's progress collating the data from the sea trials. Firstly, Stena Trader's specific fuel consumption analyzed over 68 days of the trial. Yes, we, we t took samples every day of the fuel consumption of the, of the engine and uh, we plotted a baseline over the first 14 days, so that was a full two weeks of testing. Uh, at that point, X mile was added to the fuel and, and mixed, and then we saw a, a further uh, almost 30 days before there was any change in in the uh, fuel consumption of the engine. So on day 42, we saw something of the order of 10% reduction in the specific fuel consumption, which continued right on through to the end of the test on day 68. But at that point, we were down to about a 15% improvement. Now we've got another plot of the CO emissions, the carbon output, with again the 70 days of the test. Yes, this, this is very interesting because you get a very flat trend in, in the first sort of 30 odd days, the first month of the test, showing about 1.1 uh, grams per kilowatt hour of CO. Then on day 36, we start to see a phenomena coming in which we think is engine cleanup, where the CO uh, output increases by about 20%. That continues for seven or eight days. And to be honest, that reflects the experience with motor cars, which I call decoking. Yes, yes, there's some form of clean up going on there. But the significance here is that at the end of that clean up period at day 42, where we saw the huge improvement in specific fuel consumption, the CO then drops back to um, a level uh, of it's typically 10 to 15 percent lower than the original specific CO, which in fact is the same raw CO out of the engine, but the specific uh, values follow the, the specific fuel consumption. So a very respectable result from the Steneline field test. Yes, very pleasing. Such an extensive trial enabled Professor Douglas to take account of loading in terms of the accuracy of the final results. We've been looking at 500,000 hours of data from multiple shipping, but in particular, the Stena Trader, we saw something like a 10% improvement. But that was at light load condition. Uh, over all of the, the uh, load, and particularly on some of the other vessels, we've seen that over the full load range, we're achieving an average of about 6 or 7%. So we see 10% at light load, and then slightly less at the higher load conditions. And here we are a year further on. Yes, um, on that particular vessel another 4,000 hours of running and the, the great news in that was that over that period we've seen very sustainable results with the 6 or 7 percent improvement right throughout the full year. So that shows both good durability and sustainability of the particular improvements. Whereas Stena trialled enzyme-treated marine gas oil, the Tesso line in Holland trialled enzyme-treated biodiesel. I'm with Kay Steval, the director of the Tesso shipping company operating between the Texel Island and the mainland of Holland. 
Good afternoon and welcome, Kees. Welcome on our ship, uh, sir. It's uh, very nice to have you here today. It's a beautiful day. We have a very attractive island for the people who live there and also for our tourists. And it's very important that we keep it this way for another 100 years, 200 years at least. Therefore, we make use of an addition to our fuel called um, Soltron, Soltron XML. And I must say we are happy with the first results. We started using this a few months ago and we found out that it reduced the use of fuel by 5%. Now, you've tr been trying these x mile enzymes for how long now? For a few months now, a few months. And what sort of results are you getting? The, the results we are getting is that we use less fuel and that's very good. Uh, we, you reduce 5%. That doesn't sound like it's very much, but when we go over this channel for 14,000 times a year, almost 14,000 times, that means that we have about 700 free rides. 700 free rides on the high seas? 700 free rides on the high seas, and that's very good. It, it, it saves the environment. It's also interesting for us because it saves money. So it's really a win-win situation. I think that is a win-win situation. Two of the Tesso ship engines use biodiesel. The other two engines use enzyme-treated biodiesel. Monitoring the results on board with us was Dutch government environmental advisor, Mr. Henk Barbe. The results we've seen so far is an increase in fuel economy of about 5 to 7 percent. So that also means a decrease in carbon dioxide emissions of the same amount. So 5 to 7 percent, which is quite considerable. It is considerable. I mean, what are the implications in terms of the environment? 